All right, and now it's time for this week's sponsor, I Wish I Had. And this week's sponsor is a little bit unique for me because they have two basic giant divisions of their company. The company is called Epicurium, and they make a whole host and variety of products for food service. The commercial side, which focuses a lot on uh, applications for commercial food service restaurants like thick cutting boards and utensils and serving dishes and flight boards and all of that kind of stuff, I actually work with them in my in my job that I work with. The retail side, yeah, I do not work with, and you can find their products in places like William Sonoma, Sir Lata, um, online. They have an unbelievable amount of stuff, and I think their products are so cool because, as you can see right here, this is a cutting board, and it's set up as a grid, and it might be hard to see visually here if you're on YouTube, but it's got all the different uh, cutting um the different ways you can cut vegetables uh, and it's got different dimensions and sizes and measurements and all that kind of stuff. And it's a really cool cutting board, but all of their products are dishwasher safe. All of their products are heat resistant to 350. All of their products are non-porous, which means you're not going to have a buildup of bacteria if you cut raw chicken on it, for example. Really, really awesome products. They're super fun. They come in a couple of different colors and they just look really slick. They work super well. I've had some of their stuff for five, six, seven years, and they still work perfectly. So if you're in the market for a cutting board or a fun serving platter, something really cool, check out their website, Epicurean uh, USA, or go check out William Sonoma, Sir Lata, something like that, and check them out. So Epicurean, this week's sponsor, I wish I had. Okay, for this week's Just the Tip segment, I'm going to talk about a fun little food thing that you can do with your family. I'm absolutely not uh, reinventing the wheel here, but there's some information I want to share that might be more helpful for you as, as you do this. So we've all done things like make food with our families and our kids and make pizzas or whatever. So one of the things that I've started doing uh, a couple of times a month <laughs> with our family is we get uh, we make pizza together at home. And what I'll do is I'll grab dough balls from Trader Joe's or you can get them from other grocery stores if, if you have uh, something like that nearby and get your pizza sauce and get your mozzarella cheese or even your ricotta if you want to be fancy and then go ahead and build the pizza. But if anybody can, back, can remember back to when you were kids and you would go out to Pizza Hut or whatever with your parents, man, that Supreme Pizza had our parents in a chokehold. Like that thing was on the table every single week was the the Pete the Supreme Pizza, when you get frozen pizzas, there's always a Supreme Pizza as a kid in the freezer. I'm thinking, what in the actual hell? Well, I love Supreme Pizza. I'm good with that. You can throw every ingredient in, under the sun on a pizza, and and I'll dominate it. But what I've learned is that the best topping on a pizza is restraint, and the best way to to actualize that is sort of a rule of three. And I've talked about this before last season with uh, building a charcuterie board, kind of using the rule of three when it comes to meats and cheeses and crackers and all that. But with pizza, if you're going to build a pizza with, with your spouse, with your kids, uh, doing anything fun like that, the easiest way to do that is to think about the rule of three. So you've got your pizza sauce and you've got your cheese. Let's just say you've got red sauce and mozzarella to, to make it easy. So the rule of three I would use is for the rule of three of ingredients. So I would look for a protein, like a pepperoni. I would look for a vegetable, like a mushroom. And then I would look for an unexpected ingredient. And that can be something as simple as fresh herbs, like fresh thyme or fresh basil on the pizza. Um, or it can be something like fresh honey that you would drizzle or hot honey, something like that. Um, or it can be something that would be textural. So maybe you have a pizza that is going to be sausage and red onion and maybe pistachio. Um, you you uh, cut up a bunch of pistachios and sprinkle the crumbs on top of that. Or even breadcrumbs that you've toasted that are nice and crunchy. So I always try to think about the rule of three. Give me a protein. Give me a veg. Give me something else unexpected. I've got sausage. I've got mushroom. And now I'm going to drizzle uh, balsamic reduction on top of it. 
and then you can add something more if you want, like herbs or, or, or whatever. But oftentimes people just load up the pizza. Number one, when you cook it, all those food products have moisture in them. That's all going to get released and you're going to end up fighting to have a soggy, to not have a soggy crust. Um, and then also too many things can just kind of overwhelm the palate. It works for sandwiches sometimes when you can load it up with meat, cheese, you know, lettuce, onion, pickles, tomato, uh, you know, mushroom, mayo, all, all that kind of stuff. It can work a lot of times for sandwiches, but for pizza, when you start throwing four or five, six ingredients on there, it can just become a mess. So that is my recommendation. The rule of three, give me a protein, give me a veg, give me something else unexpected. That is this week's Just the Tip. Okay, it's time for this week's Whisper In. And this week's Whisper In is an Instagram account that I have been following for several months. And I really enjoy it. Number one, because it is food. And number two is because it is very well done recipes. The name of the account is The Salad Whisperer, apropos for Whisper In. And the woman's name that runs it, her name is Sarah. And she does a great job of putting together a whole bunch of salad recipes and then showing you also how to prepare the different components of the salad recipe. She tends to lean into vegetables, but it's not a vegan uh, thing. And it's not like a diet thing. It's just really awesome salad recipes. And I think salads are such a great blank canvas to do anything. And there's so many ingredients that you can add into a salad to make it just unbelievable that we probably don't think of all the time. Such as, when was the last time that you had delicata squash and pomegranates in your salad? Exactly. So my recommendation is hop on your device, go to Instagram and find Sarah and her account, the salad whisperer this week's whisper in. All right, time for the cool down. So let's recap. Started off with my story of buying some inappropriate plates for a customer that did not like them and told every single one of my owners at the company I worked for. Uh, and that was quite the hole to dig out of for years up until just literally a summer ago when I was able to chat with her, apologize again, and kind of wipe the slate clean. The lesson from that is I think I, I was dealing with my insecurities and looking to do anything I could to uh, make me feel better about the fact that I didn't think I was a very good salesperson or that I didn't think I was very capable of building relationships with customers. And the advice that I would give on that would be, don't do what I did. Don't be in a hurry to build whatever it is. Don't look for the easy way out to build whatever it is that you're trying to do, whether it's a relationship or whether it's the body you want in the gym, in the kitchen, whether you want it's a business like what I'm doing, anything else. There are no shortcuts. We all know that. We've heard all the, the quotes from the Instagram people and everything. But when you go through the work day in and day out, then your results are often going to exceed what your expectations are. And you realize that your insecurities aren't because you're not capable. Your insecurities are because you're afraid to do the work because you're afraid you might fail. And you're afraid of what other people will think of you when you fail, as opposed to realizing that no one cares because everyone's busy doing their own thing. The sponsor I wish I had right here is Epicurean. They make a whole variety of food service products like cutting boards and serving dishes and utensils. I work with them on the commercial side, but their retail side is awesome. They have so many cool different serving dishes and cutting boards and really, really neat stuff. They're really slick looking. They, they are shaped really cool. They have really rich, vibrant colors. So I highly rec recommend checking them out. Uh, the Just the Tip segment, hey, if you're going to build pizzas, at home with the family, I recommend going to get Trader Joe dough balls. They have a whole little section where you can get the dough ball, you can get the mozzarella or ricotta, you can get the tomato sauce, you can get all that squared away. 
And then within that is sort of the rule of three for me. I do a protein, a veg, and then something unexpected. Now you can get fancy and add a couple of things and do whatever you want. But if you're looking for a baseline to start that's sort of a tried and true system to build a, a, a good tasting pizza, get yourself a protein, get yourself a veg, and then do something unexpected like some honey or a balsamic reduction or breadcrumbs or pistachio crumbs, something like that. And the whisper in, to keep along with the food theme here, is um, her name is Sarah and she runs an account on Instagram called The Salad Whisperer and does just an awesome job of putting together some really great salads, which I think is just such a great blank canvas for just flavor explosions. Um, but she does a really good job of putting a lot of cool salads together and then also breaks down the different components of how you can make each part of the salad. So very, very easy, very user-friendly, um, vegetable focused, but not vegan, but just really great for salads. And then you can take that and maybe add some chicken or add some of this or add some of that or whatever, but really, really fun. So that does it for another episode. Thank you so much. We are 12 weeks into this, which is just great. I'm so glad that I started this back up. Like I said, I've got a lot more stuff coming in the forms of other podcasts, more blogs every week on SID, sidmedia.net more videos, culinary product reviews, otherwise on the Saturdays, Saturday media on YouTube, uh, as well as Instagram. So thank you for all the support. We will see you next week on the story lesson advice podcast.